Hello everyone and welcome back to some more remote learning. In today's example worksheet, we're going to be really diving into a new integration strategy, trig integrals. Now, with each of these integrals below, our goal is to find a du where the rest of the problem can be written in terms of u. So our du is going to be multiplied to some functions of u. And below I've listed some helpful formulas and identities you may need to use for these trig integrals. And you also may need to use them when we cover trig substitution in that next example video. So I'll relist them on that new worksheet so that you have at least two pages where you have these important identities and formulas. Now there definitely are some tricks to doing these trig integrals, which we'll go over as we go through this worksheet. So we're gonna start off with something easy, example one. Now example one should just be a review. We just have the cosine of seven X. We went over this when we did a quick review of basic integration techniques, but let's do it now thinking about it as U substitution. Because we know how to take the integral of cosine of x, but how do we take the integral of the cosine of some function of x? Well, as long as we can set u as 7x and du occurs in our problem or some combination of that du, which du is 7 dx, then we'll be able to integrate. And because 7 is just some constant, we can easily solve for dx by dividing 7 over, so du over 7 equals dx. So overall in our integral, when we plug in u, we'll divide that integral by seven. So rewriting this, we'll have one seventh, so there I took care of that seven out in front, times the cosine of u du. So here's the fact that one seventh du equals dx, and I plugged in u for seven x. Now we can easily integrate cosine of u that's going to be, well, what do we take the derivative of to get cosine? That's sine. So integrating cosine will give us sine. So this will be 1 7th sine of u. And because it's an indefinite integral, we're going to have plus c. Now with it being an indefinite integral, because I don't have bounds on this that I could have switched to u and then evaluate, I need to go back to my original variable x. So I'm going to plug back in 7x for u. So the solution in number one is 1 7th sine of 7x plus c. Now this one wasn't quite a trig integral, this was just simply u substitution, but I wanted to get us warmed up and familiar with working with trig functions. Let's move on to sine squared of x in example two. Now sine squared of x there's no way to break it up where we have a u and du in the problem. If we tried to break off a sine of x, we'd have sine of x times sine of x. Those are the same thing, so that's not a u du. Or if we tried to use the Pythagorean identity above that says sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, if I rewrote sine squared as one minus cosine squared, well, I'm gonna end up with another squared trig function, which I don't know how to evaluate. So whenever you have an even exponent of a sine or cosine, when it's all by itself, we're going to use the half angle identity. So if this was sine squared, we're using half angle identity. Cosine squared, half angle identity. Sine to the fourth, that's two half angle identities. Cosine to the eighth, that's even more half angle identities. But whenever we have just an even exponent with sine or cosine, half angle identities. So we're going to rewrite this as the integral of, let's scroll up and look at that identity. Sine squared of x can be written as one minus cosine of two theta all over two. So as opposed to having theta, we have x. So we'll have one minus cosine of two x all over two. So rewriting my integral this way, you can see that everything's divided by two, so I'll pull that one half out in front, continuing to simplify. So one half times the integral of one minus cosine of two x dx. So I'm integrating one minus cosine of two x with respect to x, which 
Now, because they're subtraction, I can individually integrate each of those terms. So I'll have one half times integrating one, that's just an x, and then I'll subtract integrating cosine of two x. Remember, the integral of cosine is sine. But because we have that 2x in there, we need to take into account the derivative of that inside function, which would be 2. So as opposed to just having sine of 2x, like up above in example 1, we're going to divide by that constant. So integrating cosine of 2x becomes the sine of 2x over 2. So this is minus sine of 2x all over 2, or 1 half times sine of 2x and we can't forget our plus c. Now to finish this out, I'll go ahead and distribute in that one half, although it's not necessary. So I'll have x over two minus sine of two x all over four plus c. That's my solution and example two and our first trig integral where we use the half angle identity. Let's scroll down to our next example. In example three, we're doing the cosine of theta squared times sine of theta d theta. So as opposed to x's, I'm just using theta just to mix it up a bit. Now we have this even exponent in here, but we don't have just the even exponent with cosine or just an even exponent with sine all by itself. We're going to use those half angle identities when we just have even exponents of sine and cosine. The exponent of sine is really odd. This is sine to the first. And with this, we move on to our next hint. When we integrate with sine and cosine raised to some power, as long as one of them is odd, we're going to break that off to become our du. So because sine is raised to an odd power, that's going to become our du. So I'm going to write du as sine of theta d theta. So if that's our du, can we write everything else in terms of u? Well, if we were to integrate sine of theta, that would actually be a negative cosine of theta. And as opposed to adjusting my negative in here, I'd rather adjust it when I do my substitution. So I'm going to really make my du negative sine of theta, and u is going to be that positive cosine of theta just because it's going to make less work. So if we have that combination of sine of theta d theta as our du, and I made it negative so that our u is cosine of theta, is everything else in our problem in terms of cosine? Yes, it is. All we have is cosine squared. So now I can plug that in and integrate with respect to u. So I'm going to have the integral of, now remember, sine of theta d theta is du over a negative one. Because I don't have this negative in here, I need to divide it out and that's going to be in my new integral. So I'll have a negative out in front. And that takes care of my du. There's my negative du, which is that sine of theta d theta. So all I have left is u squared. So I'm going to integrate negative u squared with respect to u u squared becomes u cubed over 3, and remember that's a negative, and then don't forget that plus c. Now I'm switching everything back in terms of my original variables. So u is going to go back in terms of theta. So I'm going to have negative cosine cubed of theta all over 3 plus c. That's my solution in example 3. So, so far we've covered if we just have an even exponent, we covered if we have a mixture of even and odd. In number four, we have another mixture for cosine and sine of even and odds. However, this time our cosine is the one with the odd exponent. So it's the odd we want to mod. So we're going to separate one cosine off of that. So if I was to rewrite this, we're going to have the integral of cosine of x times, well, once we pull that cosine of x off, we have cosine squared x remaining, and then we're going to multiply by sine squared x 
dx. Now the nice thing about sine and cosine is when we do have that odd exponent that we split up and pull off into a single trig function to the power of one, that's going to become our du. And that's our du because we're able to write everything else in terms of u. So if our du is cosine of x dx, think about integrating cosine, that is sine. So our u is sine of x, and unlike up above, we didn't have to do any small adjustments with coefficients, like that negative one. So we have that cosine of x as our du. Can we write everything else in terms of sine of x? Yes, we can. Already, we have a sine squared x, so that's in terms of sine of x, but our cosine squared x, we can use that Pythagorean identity that says that sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, and rewrite that as one minus sine squared. So as long as we get that even exponent with that cosine or sine, we're going to be able to rewrite it in terms of that other trig function. And again, this is exclusively for sines and cosines. So I'll quickly underline my du, that's that cosine x dx is du, I just need to rewrite my cosine squared x. So I'll rewrite this integral as, visually I think it's nice to see that du all together, so I'm going to hold off writing cosine of x dx until the very end. So I'll start by rewriting cosine squared of x as, let's scroll up to that trig identity, here we have it cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals one, which means that one minus this sine squared theta, or sine squared of x, if that was our variable, is going to equal our cosine squared of theta. Because then we'll have that function in terms of u. So rewriting this cosine squared x, that's going to be from the identity, one minus sine squared x, that is cosine squared x, and that all gets multiplied by sine squared x. And remember that entire thing is multiplied by cosine of x dx. So you can see here nicely is my du, and everything else is in terms of u, just in terms of sine. Now I'm ready to do my u substitution. So I'm going to write this as the integral of one minus u squared times u squared times our du. Because remember that cosine of x dx is our du. Here's one minus u squared times u squared. Now I'll distribute through in order to integrate. So we'll have u squared minus u to the fourth du. Integrating this becomes u cubed over three minus u to the fifth over five plus c. Now because I started with x variables and this is an indefinite integral, I'm gonna go back to those x variables. Remembering that u equals sine of x, u cubed becomes sine cubed of x, and that's all over three, minus u to the fifth becomes sine to the fifth of x, over five, and we're adding c. This is our solution for this problem. And again, I wanna reiterate that when we mod that odd exponent, when we split apart that odd exponent, it leaves us with just an even exponent in terms of cosine, or if the odd exponent was with sine, it would leave us with just even signs once our du is pulled apart, which we can always rewrite cosine to an even power or sine to an even power using that Pythagorean identity. Let's move on to the next page. Now in this next page, we get into cosecant and cotangent. That's a completely different identity we're going to be using. And the same tricks for cosine and sine don't apply. Cosecant and cotangent and secant and tangent have their own separate set of rules I would say the best strategy to do is remember that goal. We're trying to find a nice du and write the rest of our problem in terms of u. So when we're dealing with cosecant and cotangent, we've got two potential u's that we can use. One u, 
would be the cosecant of x, or in this case 4x, and then the other u could potentially be the cotangent of 4x. Now if u was cosecant of 4x, what's the derivative of cosecant? Well, the derivative of cosecant is going to be negative cosecant of that function, so of 4x, times cotangent of 4x, times the derivative of that inside, which is 4. So I'm going to write negative 4 out in front. So the derivative of cosecant of 4x is negative 4 cosecant of 4x cotangent of 4x. Now remember, we can always divide that constant out when we do that u substitution, so let's ignore this negative 4 for now. Let's just look at the cosecant of 4x and cotangent of 4x. If that was my du, can I write everything else in terms of cosecant? Well, let's see. If we were to split this apart, we need to pull off a cosecant and a cotangent so that we could write this as cosecant cotangent. So doing that, I'll have cosecant of 4x times cotangent to the fourth of 4x, and then you can see I have my du of cosecant of 4x times cotangent of 4x dx. And let me fill this in, I forgot to write my dx here. So we'll put that dx in, and you can see that we do indeed have a du here, but can we write everything else in terms of cosecant? And yes, we can, because here's a cosecant, so there's a u, and cotangent to the fourth of 4x, if you think of that as cotangent squared of 4x squared, cotangent squared, of some theta, if we scroll up to our identities, we can rewrite that to be cotangent squared of theta equals cosecant squared of theta minus 1. So if we were to substitute this in for that cotangent function, we would have nothing but cosecants in our integral. So yes, we have our du and we have everything else in terms of u. Because remember, that's our goal. However, in this case, I'll be completely honest, this one's going to take a little bit of work to do that. So even though we know that setting u as cosecant of 4x is going to work, let's look at setting u as cotangent of 4x, because what's the derivative of cotangent of 4x? Well, the derivative of cotangent of 4x is going to be negative cosecant squared of 4x times 4 dx. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that 4 out in front, so this is going to say negative 4 cosecant squared of 4x dx. So we're going to ask ourselves, do we have that du without focusing on that constant, because we can always manipulate that constant. Do we have that du the cosecant squared of 4x dx somewhere in our problem? Yeah, we do. Cosecant squared of 4x dx is right there. Is everything else in our problem in terms of u? Yep, everything else is in terms of cotangent. So this is going to be a much simpler way, and when we do it this way, it's going to give us an equivalent answer to if we were to go about doing it the other way, except this way will be much quicker. So let's go through with that. So if our u is cotangent of 4x, we have u to the fifth. Now remember, du is negative 4 cosecant squared of 4x dx. I have cosecant squared of 4x dx, but I don't have this negative 4 in here, so I can divide that out so that my cosecant squared of 4x dx is really du over negative 4. So rewriting this, I'm going to put negative one-fourth out in front and integrate u to the fifth with respect to u. u to the fifth becomes u to the sixth over six, so this is negative u to the sixth over six times four, which is 24. Because u to the sixth over six times that negative one-fourth becomes negative u to the sixth over 24. 
and we can't forget that plus c because it's an indefinite integral and we also need to go back in terms of the variable we started with which u is cotangent of 4x so the solution in this first example on the second page is going to be negative cotangent of 4x to the sixth so negative cotangent to the sixth of 4x all over 24 plus c let's move on to our next example in our next example we're back to sines and cosines which if we have sines and cosines we're going to mod the odd so we're going to modify that trig function with the odd exponent but in this case they both have odd exponents so the question becomes does it matter which one we split apart no it doesn't matter which one we split apart although let me ask you this do you want to do more work or less work less work right so let's modify that smaller one so let's split that smaller odd exponent up so we'll rewrite this as and remember when we split off one of those cosines that's going to become part of our du so i'll save that to write towards the end of my integral so that i have my du visually together so this will be cosine squared of x sine to the fifth of x times cosine of x dx here's my du cosine of x dx and i don't need to modify it because when i integrate that i just get simply sine of x so now all i need to do is rewrite this cosine squared x so that i have it in terms of u and then the rest of my problem will be nothing but u's so cosine squared of x becomes 1 minus sine squared x then we have sine of x all raised to the fifth times cosine of x dx here we go let's plug in those u's so we have the integral of 1 minus u squared times u to the fifth du now in order to integrate i'll distribute that through so we have u to the fifth minus u to the seventh du integrating u to the fifth becomes u to the sixth over six and integrating u to the seventh becomes u to the eighth over eight plus c now i'll go back to my x and my x remember is that u is equivalent to the sine of x so i'm going to plug sine of x in everywhere i see a u so that's sine of x to the power of six all over six minus the quantity sine of x that raised to the eighth all over eight and plus c so there's my solution in this example now like i said it's not going to matter whether we modify the larger odd exponent or the smaller odd exponent but i just want to show you quickly if you do modify that larger odd exponent it's just going to be a little bit more work so let's rewrite this problem doing it again and i'll go through this fairly quickly so breaking off one of those signs we're going to have cosine cubed of x times sine to the fourth of x times sine of x dx so i broke that off because that becomes my du however remember integrating sine we're going to get a negative cosine and i don't want to deal with the negative throughout my problem so i'm going to deal with it within my du so i'll make du equal to negative sine dx which essentially means that negative du equals the positive sine of dx and then my u is just going to be that positive cosine of x now can i write my problem in terms of u i totally can i can rewrite sine to the fourth of x in terms of u because it's now an even exponent and i can use that pythagorean identity that says that one minus cosine squared of x equals sine squared of x. So right now in my problem, I have that cosine cubed of x, one minus cosine squared of x, but remember that's sine squared x, whereas I want sine to the fourth of x, 
So I'm going to have to square this identity. And then that's multiplied by sine of x dx. So this is indeed sine squared x squared, which is sine of x all raised to the power of 4. Now that I have everything else in terms of u, I'll quickly plug that in. So we'll get u cubed times 1 minus u squared squared du. But remember with that du, it was negative. Sine of x dx was that negative du. So I'll pull my negative all the way out in front. Now I need to expand that out before I can distribute it through. So I'm going to have negative u cubed times expanding 1 minus u squared squared. That's going to be 1 minus 2u squared plus u to the fourth du. Now I can finally distribute through that u cubed to get negative u cubed minus 2u to the fifth plus u to the seventh du. So you can see already this is a lot more work. Now we can finally integrate this. So this becomes negative u to the fourth over four minus a negative, so that'll be plus two u to the sixth over six, and then we're subtracting, once we distribute that negative through, u to the eighth over eight plus c. Now in this case my u represented cosine of x, so I'll have negative cosine to the fourth of x all over four, plus two over six is one third, so this will be cosine to the sixth of x over three, minus cosine to the eighth of x over eight, plus c. So you can see by modifying that larger odd exponent, splitting that apart, we're going to get more terms that we have to deal with. So we have this solution, which is a correct solution, but when comparing it with the first one we got, this first one was much easier. Let's go ahead and zoom out real quick, showing some of the work. We have all of this work versus this work. So it is indeed easier to modify the smaller odd exponent, but either way, we'll give you a correct solution. Let's move on to number seven. In number seven, we have sine squared of 3x times cosine squared of 3x dx. What did I say about even exponents? When we have nothing but even exponents for sine and cosine, we need to use half angle identities. So we're going to rewrite sine squared of 3x as a half angle identity and cosine squared of 3x as a half angle identity. So this problem is going to be pretty in depth with those two half angle identities. But once we set that up, it's pretty much algebra from there. So this integral becomes sine squared of 3x versus cosine squared 3x, scrolling up to our half angle identities. Sine squared, we subtract the cosine of 2 theta, whereas with cosine squared, we add the cosine of 2 theta. So as far as memorizing these goes, it's really just a matter of adding versus subtracting. So for this sine squared of 3x, remember that was when that cosine of 2 theta was subtracted. So we have 1 minus cosine of 2 theta, whereas theta you can think of as our function within that cosine. So we're going to have 1 minus cosine of 2 times 3x. So this is going to be 6x all over 2, and that gets multiplied by 1 plus, again multiplying that by 2, cosine of 6x all over 2. And we're going to integrate that with respect to x. We have 1 half times 1 half, that's multiplied to everything, so I'm going to pull a 1 fourth out in front. And pulling a 1 fourth out in front, now all I have are two binomials that I will be able to distribute together. So leaving my 1 fourth out in front, we'll have foiling 1 times 1, 1, and then I have 1 times cosine of 6x, but then I have negative cosine of 6x times 1, so I'll have 
cosine of 6x minus cosine of 6x, those terms will cancel out to leave me with zero. So the only thing left is cosine of 6x, that one that's negative, times cosine of 6x. So that's going to be minus cosine squared of 6x. And I'm integrating this still with respect to x. So you can see we simplify this problem down, except look what we have. We can split this integral up because we just have subtraction and we can easily integrate one. However, now we have cosine to an even exponent all by itself. What are we gonna have to do? We're going to have to do another half angle identity. So this becomes 1 fourth times the integral of one with respect to x. I'll go ahead and integrate that part now. Integrating one is just x. So I have 1 fourth times x, but I'm subtracting the integral of cosine squared of 6x dx. Remember that 1 fourth is multiplied to everything. Continuing this problem over here, I'll distribute that 1 fourth through so that we don't have to worry about continuing writing those parentheses. So this is just me doing a little bit of rewriting. I'm not changing anything. So I have 1 fourth the integral of cosine squared of 6x dx. But while I'm at it, why don't I go ahead and use my half angle identity? Cosine squared of 6x, if that 6x is theta in this instance, plugging that into our formula above, we're going to have 1 plus cosine of 2 theta, which becomes 12x, multiplying both sides by 2 in order to get that 2 theta, that becomes 12x all over 2 dx. So we have 1 fourth x minus, I can pull that 1 half out, 1 fourth times 1 half is 1 eighth, and now all I have to integrate is 1 plus cosine of 12x dx. This is something I can easily integrate. So I have 1 fourth x minus, integrating 1 is x, so that's minus 1 eighth x, and I'm subtracting, integrating 1 eighth times the cosine of 12x. Integrating cosine, that's a sine. So I have the sine of 12x in my numerator, but remember I need to divide by that coefficient of x, which is 12 over 12, but don't forget I have to distribute that 1 eighth through just as I distribute that subtraction through, so that's multiplied by 8 in the denominator, and I have plus c. Now I can combine 1 fourth x and 1 eighth x, so 1 fourth minus 1 eighth, that's going to leave me with 1 eighth x, and I'm subtracting sine of 12x all over 12 times 8, which is 96 plus c. And that's my solution for this example. And yes, that was a lot of work because we had to substitute in so many half angle identities. Just be grateful that it wasn't something like sine to the fourth times cosine to the fourth of some function, because that would have been even more work. But now with all the examples we've done, we've walked through where we've had sine or cosine by itself with one even exponent. We walked through an odd and even exponent problem with sine and cosine. Again, with sine and cosine, we did problems where they were both odd, and deciding which one to modify, and we've done a problem where they're both even. These are the different types of problems you're going to have with sines and cosines. Cotangents and cosecants, secants and tangents are a little different, but the goal still applies. Find that good du to get a nice u. So let's move on to number eight, where we have secant cubed of x, tangent of x, dx. What I like to do is I like to think about what would be a good u, and if I chose that as my u, what would be my du? Because whatever du I decide, I want everything else in terms of u. So my two potential options looking at this problem that I see right now would be setting u as tangent of x or setting u as secant of x because those are two functions I easily know how to take the derivative of. If I set my u as tangent of x, 
my du is derivative of tangent secant squared of x dx. If I set my u as secant x, well that derivative is secant x tangent of x dx. So looking at this first potential u, if my du was secant squared of x dx is everything else in terms of u, in order to get a secant of x dx, I need to split this apart. So I would write this as secant of x, and remember my personal preference is to leave that du off to the far right, so I'll write tangent of x next, and then I'll write secant squared of x dx. So you can see here's my du, is everything else in terms of u, or can I make everything else in terms of u? And the answer in this case is no. Yes, I have my u here, so that's good, but secant of x, having that odd power, there's no way to write it in terms of tangent of x. If this was an even power, well then sure, we can use that nice Pythagorean identity that we have up above. But since it's not, there's no way to write the rest of this problem in terms of u, so this is not a good du to use because everything is not in terms of u. So let's erase it and look at the next one. If my du was secant x tangent of x dx, is everything else in terms of secant? Well, let's take a look. Let's write this as splitting that du off to the side. I'm going to have, well, in order to make this du, I need to split this secant off. So I'm going to have secant squared of x times secant of x times tangent of x dx. So here you can see my du. Is everything else in my problem in terms of u, or can I write it? Yeah, everything else is in terms of secant of x. So this problem simply becomes the integral of u squared du, where u is that secant of x. Integrating, I'll get u cubed over 3 plus c. Now I just plug everything back in. So that's going to be secant cubed of x all over 3 plus c. And there we have it. So let's continue on keeping in mind that we're trying to find that du so that we can write everything else in terms of u. So in number 9, my potential derivatives well, I'll either set u as secant or I'll set it as tangent, or at least that's what I'm looking at at the moment. So if I set u as tangent of theta versus setting u as secant of theta, is my du and my problem? When I take the derivative of tangent, that's secant squared of theta. When I take the derivative of secant of theta, that's going to be secant of theta tangent of theta, and don't forget when I'm taking those derivatives, I have d theta. So looking at secant squared theta d theta as my du. So just thinking about this without even writing it out, if we took apart this secant cubed of theta and made it secant squared times secant, I'll make this to the first, and then I have a secant squared theta d theta in there, if this is my du, is everything else in my problem, can I write it in terms of u? No, I can't because I have this secant of theta that I don't know how to write as tangent of theta. So this wouldn't be a good one to use. But let's look at that next one. If my du was secant theta tangent theta d theta, can I write everything else in terms of secant? Well, before we even rewrite the integral, let's just think. If I split off a secant from here and I split off a tangent from here, I'd have secant squared theta left over and tangent to the fourth of theta left over. So the secant squared theta totally in terms of u, but my tangent to the fourth of theta, can I write that in terms of u? Yes, because it's raised to that even exponent, I'll be able to use one of my identities. So let's go ahead and write this out. So splitting off a secant, I'll have secant squared theta times splitting off a tangent, I'll have tangent to the fourth of theta and here is what I split off, secant theta, tangent theta, d theta. Here's my du. I need to rewrite this in terms of u since this is already in terms of u. So I'll have secant squared theta times, remember back to that identity, 
scrolling back up, tangent squared theta plus one equals secant squared theta. So I'm going to rewrite tangent squared theta as secant squared theta minus one. So we have secant squared theta minus one, that is tangent squared theta, but I have tangent of theta all raised to a power of four. So since this is tangent squared of theta, I need to square this to get to that fourth power. Or if you wanna think of it as splitting tangent squared theta up and writing two separate identities, you can do that as well. And that might be a little bit easier if you struggle with foiling. So let's go ahead and do that. Splitting up that tangent to the fourth of theta, that's tangent squared theta times tangent squared theta, which, when I use that identity, is secant squared theta minus one times secant squared theta minus one, and I still have secant theta tangent theta d theta. Here is my du, and everything else is in terms of u. So I'll have u squared times one minus u squared times one minus u squared du. So u squared, foiling out one minus u squared times one minus u squared, that's going to be one minus two u squared plus u to the fourth du. Distributing now, I'll get u squared minus two u to the fourth plus u to the sixth du. Now my last and final steps are to integrate and then plug in what u is. So this becomes u cubed over three minus two u to the fifth over five plus u to the seventh over seven plus c. And remember my u for this case was secant of theta. So I have secant cubed of theta all over three minus two times secant of theta, that entire quantity raised to the fifth and that's over five, plus secant of theta, that quantity is raised to the seventh, so secant to the seventh theta, all over seven plus c. And with that, we wrap up this final example on this practice worksheet. Hopefully you've picked up some helpful tricks for solving these trig integrals because they're going to come back up in that next example video when we go over trig substitutions. Lots of times with trig substitutions, when we simplify the problem down, we'll wind up with a trig integral. So we'll get extra practice doing this in the next video. But remember, don't lose that goal in mind. We need to get a good du to where everything else in our problem is in terms of u and then it's easy to integrate. If you have any lingering questions, feel free to let me know. And until next video, good luck with your online learning.